Uh, we, we were overloaded on the uh, Rhine crossing, that's for sure. Um, on the Rhine crossing, of course, like so many others, we got we lost all our flying controls. Actually, we were being hit by anti-aircraft fire. That was interesting. But uh, all we were left with was the tail trimmer. And we were lucky, actually, because we'd just come off tow and got into uh, sort of our optimum gliding speed. And then we lost a great chunk of wing and all our flying controls got severed with the exception of the tail trimmer. So we were already at the right attitude, but direction, you know, we had no control over which way we were going, and we were going the wrong way. We weren't going towards friendly territory. We were going into the <laughs> into enemy territory big time. But uh, we could do nothing about it. But there you go. And when we hit the ground eventually, it was um, it went to stand on its nose, and I got thrown through the uh, perspex canopy. And I remember I got out, uh, I picked myself up, um, shouted for a Bren gun, which I was my weapon of choice. Uh, and one of the gunners, I'd got a 17 pounder gun and truck in the, in the glider. And I remember the guy saying, the sergeant's trapped. And I said, never mind the sergeant being trapped. Throw me down my Bren gun. And I found myself sitting under a dike with some angry people one side the dike and me the other trying to eat a Mars bar. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? You know, talk about adrenaline flowing. Yeah, you know, I just sat there eating a Mars bar. We were getting mortared, of course. Oh, yeah. Was, I spent the rest of that day running away. <laughs> and how's that for a, a, a big bad soldier <laughs> running away? Um, <coughs> uh, that was uh, it was it was it was a good life. So uh, yeah, you know, I, I was happy in the army. Yeah. And what else do you remember about the Rhine crossing? Um. Well, the first thing I I, I recall, I, we were third in the uh, in the stream in the Hamilton stream, and the glider on my port side uh, carried a tank. And to load the tank, they would back it into the th and shackle it down. And I, I remember seeing the back end of the glider break open and the tank come out backwards with the guys the crew, you know, some a couple or three of the crew sitting on the outside of the tank, falling off, and the tank you know, turning over and going and crashing to, to the ground or into the Rhine. I don't know where it went. It made a blubbery hole wherever it went because it was it was at three thousand feet. So, you know, a tank at three thousand feet. Uh, would wouldn't bounce. That would really make a good hole when it hit the floor. Uh, so that was my my first memory of it. Then all, the smoke, which was being generated on the uh, west bank, to cover the uh, invasion by uh, or the incursion by troops on the on the ground, uh, obscured an awful lot of what we were trying to look for to get ourselves make certain we were landing in the right place. And as I say, then getting hit and getting hit was, uh, that was funny because I remember looking at the port wing and thinking, my God, that's a bloody big hole. And there we are, because we lost a great chunk of port wing. We really did. How we kept flying, God only knows, but you know, we did, as I say, we lost all our controls and got hit again, well and truly, and that, that was it. And then, as I say, we, we had no choice in our direction. That was being dictated by where the controls were set and 
the whims of the wind or what have we, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm sorry, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's so, I, I just, you just, you know, in retrospect, I look back and think how lucky I was, but, um, you know, I can't say at the time, uh, there was, I suppose the adrenaline is flying like the clappers, you know, let's face it, you know, you, 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 you don't think you're going to die. No way did you think you were going to die. You just thought, hell's bells, that shouldn't have happened sort of thing. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you know, that, that was how life went. And were you uh, badly hurt when the no, spider landed? No, not at all. Not at all. No, no. Uh, as I say, I got flung. To, uh, as the aircraft, as the glider tipped up, it threw the, the, the cockpit, as you know, is on the top, uh, and, and, and it flipped up onto its nose. I thought it was going to turn over, and that happened more than once with others. Where they got uh, the, and the pilots just got crushed, you know, because the, the load the load would be on top of them. But uh, it flipped up, and I went through the the, the perspex canopy and uh, onto the ground. As I say, then I must have shaken myself and shouted for a Bren gun, and then went and scurried very quickly onto uh, under under the shelter of this dike. And got my bars bar out. <laughs> I had to give him pounds for a drink of water at that stage, I can tell you. Oh, dear. Uh, 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 I, I, I don't know that I can tell you any more about how I felt. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know about your bomber guys, but, you know, uh, I mean, they they thundered on for hours and hours and hours. Um, the uh, on the operation, the the real exciting bit, if you can call it exciting, is when you get there, and that, that lasts what two minutes, maybe you know, sort of thing, maximum. You know, off tow, and you're going down. You know. Oh, yeah. When you were in the cockpit, yeah. when you were coming into land, were you wearing a helmet? Um, you know, I don't know if I've got a steel helmet on or not. I know I very, very quickly put my red berry on. That, 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 that sounds daft, doesn't it? But yeah. Yeah. I, I, I must have done. I, I must have done. If I hadn't had a, if I hadn't had a steel helmet on, I, I, I'd have really hurt my head. Yeah. So I must, I must have done. Yeah. I'm fairly certain I did. Thinking about it, but uh, as I say. Uh, I, I quickly discarded it and put my red berry on and there I was a, a big bad airborne soldier so be careful because you know, you're dealing with the creme de la creme of the British army so to speak yeah Did German soldiers attack your glider? Oh yeah they mortared it they obviously they could see the tail of the aircraft sticking up like a signpost, so they knew and they'd see it come down. I mean, without doubt, they you know. I mean, it's big enough to to see it, isn't it? As if it's a little thing, and uh, and we were getting mortared straight away. Uh, I mean, you know, the earth was jumping up and down all around the place, but nobody's business. Because uh, we left, uh, we we moved from there and joined up with some uh, Irish guys and some of the Oxen Bucks uh, thing, 
and we decided they weren't the, the best people to go with. Bert Bowman and I, my, the other pilot in the glider, um, it was a question of somebody, an officer would say, Sergeant so-and-so, and Sergeant so-and-so's dead, sir. Sergeant so-and-so, Sergeant Corporal so-and-so, Corporal so-and-so's dead, sir. We thought, hey, we don't agree with this lot. <laughs> this sounds a bit iffy. So we left them and uh, and ran ran away somewhere else and joined up with some others and then eventually uh, we sort of fought our way back to uh, where we should be, as it were, which was quite some distance actually. We were quite away from Hamilton. Yeah, but uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, the uh, I remember. Uh, the Americans coming in uh, as we were, I'll call it retreating, and um, uh, a glider landed 20 or 30 feet from where we were, and not a soul got out. The schmoisers just ripped the glider apart, and not, not one person got out. So that would be, what, uh, 22 guys just dead before they even had a chance to get out of the glider. I mean, it was uh, it was quite uh, hairy uh, in, in the initial stages. Then we obviously had total uh, control of the area, and that was it. Yeah. Just hidden German foxholes and stuff like that. Have the Germans installed anti-glider obstacles? Um, I can't say I saw any. I can't say. Well, you see, we we landed in the wrong place. We we landed where we we shouldn't have been, so to speak. We 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 we. Uh, uh, the aircraft I was in lost total directional control, so we went probably I don't know probably way past where we should have been. As I say, we, we 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 were out on a limb, you know. So so uh, uh, no, I can't say I saw any uh, any uh, anti uh, aircraft uh, landing posts and stuff like that. But they seeded the grounds within some areas, because uh, obviously, I mean, the first German I took prisoner, he he, he demanded to know where we'd been. He said to me, in, in good English, where have you been? And I said, what do you mean, where have we been? He said, they tell us English flying troops come and we hide in the woods and wait for you. You not come. Where have you been? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we weren't unexpected. But, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's it. I'm, uh, as I say, very uh, sort of ordinary experience, I suppose. And uh, the I think you said there was a seventeen pounder gun in the Hamel car. Yeah. Did they manage to get it out? God knows. I never. <laughs> I don't even know what happened to the gun crew. I really don't. Uh, presumably, they'd get the, their sergeant out who was trapped. How he was trapped, I haven't a clue. You know, it's uh, I, I don't recall seeing any of the the the, the gun detachment uh, that was there you know, getting out. I mean, how many of them would get injured? God only knows. You know, uh, whether whether the uh, quad truck that was the, the towing vehicle, whether that set forward. Uh, I mean, it, it would have been chained down. But, uh, you know, when you hit the ground at a fair old rate of knots and, uh, you know, the, sh the shackles and stuff would probably get pulled out of the strong points anyhow. So, uh, but, I mean, I never saw any signs of the, as I recall, of the gunners or, uh, I mean, certainly the, the 17 pounder, no, that never as far as I know, it never came out. Never came out. And how long was it before you met up with other Allied soldiers? Um, 
I suppose it would be maybe 20 minutes, something like that. I mean, we were skulking along and trying to keep out of the way of these angry people. I mean, two guys, <laughs> two guys and a Bren gun and a, 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 a rifle. <laughs> I wasn't going to take on the Wehrmacht. So was it only mortars landing at you, or were soldiers shooting at you as it, well? It was, it, my, my memory is of mortars, yeah, being mortared, yeah, yeah. And there's, there's certainly, there was certainly plenty of that, yeah. And uh, as I say, it wasn't until we got with some other troops that... Um, we, uh, as I say, the, the guys in the, the American glider, they just got, I mean, we were sort of trying to keep out of the way and uh, these guys with the Schmeisers and MG42s, boy, they, they really ripped into these Americans. I mean, they were landing all over the place, but the one that really did, I remember vividly, is this thing came skidding to a halt with a beautiful landing he made, but nobody got out. Nobody got out. They all got killed before they got out. Yeah. How far away from you was that glider when it came into land? 20 feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. I, I, you, I mean, we, we, I, I, we were shouting. We shouted at them, daft as it sounds. Get out, get out. But it was too late. Right? The Germans were there, just the other side of where the, these Americans were landing. Again, obviously in the wrong place, really. And uh, yeah, they, they just got killed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and my, uh, I suppose my other memory is, I, I the first night. I went to find some tea, uh, find something to drink, and uh, I found a field hospital, uh, sort of not a posh place by any means. It was just a, a house that was being taken over as a field hospital, and I, I was outside, and a surgeon came out. He was covered in in blood and one thing or another. And there were all these dead guys lying, lined up outside. And he said to me, have you, ever seen a, a, have you ever seen a man's brains, Sergeant? And I said, no. And he said, and he lifted the helmet of one soldier and his whole of his cranium was in the, uh, in, in the helmet and in the bowl of his head was his brains. Yeah. I mean, it could have been, it was just like meat to me, because I, I, I didn't know the guy or anything, you know. But uh, it was, um, there must have been 30 or 40 bodies all laid out by this field hospital sort of thing. But, uh, yeah. Funny old God. Yeah. And as a sergeant, what were your responsibilities once you were on the ground? Um, we were supposed supposed to get to Hamilton, uh, where the um, headquarters was. That was our, uh, I mean, you know, sort of, um, the, the, basically, of course, we, we were quite valuable in the time and money that had been spent on training us as uh, special forces in a way, uh, gilding the lily a bit, but, you know, sort of thing. I mean, uh, at D-Day, for example, guys who landed on D-Day, uh, they were back in the UK within 12 hours, uh, glider pilots, you know. Arnhem, of course, was a very different ball game. Uh, they didn't come back until... Well, the battle was over, basically, the guys from Arnhem. Because, uh, you know, we were planned to go to the Far East, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. So, that's it, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 
so mundane, really. Uh, there's no great heroics or anything like that in it whatsoever. I was just doing a job that uh, I was trained for, and you know, it was uh, my memories are good. The only thing is, all the guys I knew have all fallen off the log. I think I'm one of the last ones. <laughs> I don't know of any others at the moment, I must admit. There must be the odd one somewhere or other. What was your unit's objective for the Rhine crossing? Basically, to get this 17 pounder gun and whatnot in the, to the right place so they could take part in the, the battle or, or whatever. Uh, and we failed miserably because we wrecked it. <laughs> yeah, not nothing more than that. Nothing more than that to get it there safely. I mean, the hard work really w was the tow. You know, it's a long tow, and you you you're fighting the aircraft all the, all the way, the glider all the way. It's it just 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 didn't sail along on its own you know you, you, you're working all the time to uh, keep the thing in the right position and you know talking to the tug crew as it were yeah I mean it's like your bomber boys I mean uh, you know the minute they take off the lab cats just haven't got uh, automatic pilots and stuff like that they're working all the time and their objective is to get to the target and get back. But as for the bombing and all the rest of the navigation and whatnot, that, that's, that's not their responsibility. And the pilot's job is to get the aircraft there safely and get it back safely if they can. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. Now, there's some very brave men, and I can't say I'm one of them. <laughs> I just knew some very brave men, believe you me. Do you remember anything about the briefing for the Rhine crossing? About the briefing before you left? Um, yes, we we were promised um, uh, total air cover, uh, which didn't uh, appear. Uh, we had some air cover because I remember t talking to the guys down below. They couldn't see anything, and I, I remember telling them what I could see, and I, I could see um, aircraft uh, either getting shot up or um, or parachuting down, and I was sort of gave them a bit of a running commentary of, of what was going on, as it were. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, the, the flight was pretty uneventful, you know, sort of thing. Um, you could see an awful lot of the ground. We were at 3,000 feet, just over 3,000 feet. And, of course, at 3,000 feet, you see an awful lot of the ground. So I could tell them, you know, we're just wide of Cali at the moment because, of course, Cali was still in German hands, so we sort of went round Cali and whatnot. And then I, I could say, I could see four Thunderbolt aircraft uh, on, on our port side or whatever and uh, sort of but um, whether whether they listened or not I don't know. And did you talk much with the co-pilot? Uh, oh well, well I suppose we must have uh, Bert, Bert and I you know, sort of must have talked to one another but uh, I don't recall it, to be honest with you. No, I really don't. We were just flying, yeah. You know? And what did you say to the tug crew on the radio? Um, well, uh, 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 the thing I, I do remember is we we thanked them for the tow. That was <laughs> that, that was about the size of uh, sort of uh, when we we got the other end. I mean. Um, we probably had a couple of words with them during the tow, you know, sort of thing, because there was a sort of a telephone wire 
inside the the the, the, the tow road, which was a, a damn big road, I can tell you. But um, yeah, uh, that's about it. I'm afraid. Looking back, how do you feel about the uh, airborne operation on the Rhine? Um, well, it was the biggest operation there was, uh, without doubt. I, I mean, uh, I, I'm glad I was there. Uh, as I say, uh, it was part of my education, <laughs> as it were. Um, no, I, I was just proud to be a member of a regiment that covered itself in reasonable amount of glory. And, uh, and my real feeling, I suppose, is that I felt privileged to have known so many brave men. And I really did do, you know. And I mean, as I say, the uh, the friendships that uh, resulted from being in. I mean, I know I knew more people after the war uh, who were in the regiment than uh, 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 the, the the Royal Artillery Regiment so I was again, or, or in the, the Royal Yorkshire Regiment. You know, uh, it's, um, and now, as I say, the Army Air Corps have you know, taken over the, the, the modern Army Air Corps, and uh, they're very, shall I say, friendly towards me, sort of thing. Yeah, oh yes. And when did you hear about Operation Market Garden? Um, I, I was with the American uh, 9th Troop Carrier Command at the time, and my boss was one of the original parachutists that went to Bruneville. And he was a sergeant at the time of Bruneville. And uh, his name was Luton. And I remember Luton saying to me, uh, uh, he, was, he was very upset about the losses at, at, at Arnhem. He, he, you know, he knew there was a battle going on uh, or we knew there was a battle going on, but he was very upset because, of course, he was. Uh, there were mainly paras at Arnhem, and uh, you know, he was sort of, as I say, quite upset at the thought of all his mates fighting there. And a, he wasn't there, or b, he was, you know, sort of feeling. Sorry for them losing their lives. So I don't know, but that, that's my memory of Arnhem. As I say, the, the minute Arnhem was over, I, I I found myself very quickly back into a fighting unit, as opposed to living high off the hog in the in, with the American Air Force. <laughs> oh yeah. And were you worried that the Rhine crossing would end like Arnhem? No. No, oh no, 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 we could lose. We could, yeah, that was the attitude, we could lose. Uh, I don't know if that's the time that we were told uh, two of us out of three would probably die, but uh, <laughs> you look at the other two guys either side of you and think, I'm, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I don't recall it. Uh, I think the briefing probably took an hour, maybe a bit more than an hour. And of course, we talked to the tug crews, you know, and that sort of thing. But, uh, ah. well, they're all right. And do you think uh, the Rhine crossing could have gone any better, or do you think it was that was just how it would have gone regardless? Uh, I, 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 the, the first thing that happens to any battle plan is it's going to go wrong. Now, I can't say that it went really wrong. It went wrong as far as I personally was concerned because, you know, of what happened. 
that I, I think in the main it was I, I, to a large degree uh, I think an awful lot of the, the uh, Germans uh, knew the writing was on the wall. I think you know they, they, they could see that the the amount of, uh, of uh, forces against them were, were totally overwhelming them. And where we got everything, I think they'd got very, very little. I, th I think it was, yeah, I, I, th I, I think you'd put it down as a success. I don't think the losses were anything as great as they thought they were going to be. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't honestly know what the percentage of losses was. But, um, yeah, I, I think it was, uh, you know, a, a success. Especially after after Arnhem, I mean that really was carnage. That you know, the battle for the bridge was well, it was hopeless, wasn't it? So what happened uh, after you'd met up with uh, Allied troops at the Rhine? Did you start advancing with them? Uh, no, uh, we. Got we the the glider pilots got taken out of of the line. We we went back to a, a transit camp, and uh, two days or three days later, we were flown back from Helmond to. In actual fact, uh, we we went back to Bryce Norton. Uh, we landed at Bryce Norton, and then from there we dissipated to our various squadrons. Uh, so oh no. We didn't. We didn't do an awful lot of fighting. Believe you me. I, as I say, I, I did more running away than fighting. <laughs> did you ever actually use the Bren gun in combat? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, I mean, on one occasion, uh, we we were with a group of about eight or nine troops. What regiment they were, I haven't got a clue. There were there were two young officers with them, I, I remember that, and uh, we're we're there in this wood, and uh, lo and behold, about four forty Germans <laughs> went across, <laughs> and these guys stood up, put their binoculars up to the and said, uh, one said to the other, Jeremy. There are some there are some Jerry's over here, <laughs> and I thought you don't need. I'm on the floor. I can tell you, <laughs> keeping my head down, I could see them. Didn't need to stand up with binoculars to look to look at these Germans, but we we, we let them go. It was you know, it, it, it was over. We we knew it was over. Uh, you know, no point in killing them. We we'd done our, our fighting. As I say, we were on a on our way back to the to transit camp to to be flown home. Yeah. So I, I say I, I had a, a very easy war. I really did. Was the Bren gun a good weapon? Yes. I, I, I was happy with it. For all it... Uh, I mean, when we were running away, around my waist I'd got a lanyard and the barrel catch I would occasionally catch on to this, and the guts of the, the, the Bren gun would fall out, <laughs> and I'd have to stop. Now, when I was in a, uh, there were about oh, uh, 15 or 20 of us sort of sneaking away, and uh, I'd stop and put the Bren gun together again very quickly. <laughs> but every time I stopped, somebody would pass me, and I, I, I think I'd nearly finished up at the tail end of this little little group who were running away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about, but it was a, it was a, it was a good weapon. It was a good weapon. Very slow rate of fire. When you consider that, like the Germans, uh, I mean, it was their, their weapons, automatic weapons, were, were like sewing machines. You know, zzz, 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 whereas ours went bang, bang, bang. You know, sort of thing. Yeah. Oh yes, very. I mean, well, I forget what the rate of fire of a Bren is at the moment. Something like hundred and twenty a minute or something. But uh, yeah, it's uh, 
it was a good good weapon. It, it lasted throughout. Well, it lasted well throughout the war and beyond. Yeah, uh, yeah. And before the Hamilcar crash landed in uh, Germany, did you were you telling the everyone aboard to brace for impact? Or? No, I didn't. I I don't. Uh, once we were hit. Um, I, I think we were a bit too busy to talk to anybody down below. I mean, we, we were already in, in free flight when we were hit. So we were, you know, looking for where we ought to be. Uh, and, and then we were hit. And it was just a question of fight, fighting the aircraft. I mean, when you think the tail trimmer was only about that size uh, on a Hamel car, uh, that's the only control we'd got. And that only uh, altered attitude, uh, directional. Uh, we we were just sitting tight, and you know, our buttocks were very tight together. <laughs> and hold on, we, we, we we're going to hit the ground, boys. <laughs> what what they thought down below, I haven't got a clue. I, in fact, I don't honestly know whether it, the actual. Uh, fuselage uh, where the, the load was I don't even know if that was ever hit with ACAC fire or small arms fire or anything I really don't I just know that we lost this great big chunk of port wing and then all our controls we got hit in the fuselage and all our controls went out the window and that was it and do you know which what kind of guns were shooting at you? Um, I, I, just about everything. Well, I mean, when I got on the ground, it, w there was an immediate re resupply by uh, Liberator aircraft, and they came over to at about two hundred and fifty feet. That was all, with the bomb doors wide open, dropping all the resupply kit, and uh, near us. There was must have been an anti-aircraft battery. They they were good. They shot down about four of these liberators just like that. Bang bang bang. You know, a lot lots of noise and whatnot. But whether they were eighty eights or uh, forty mil or thirty mil uh, uh, orlicans or what, I haven't got a clue. But um, lot lots of lot. There was lots of ACAC fire. Believe you me. Oh yes. I mean, you know, what a lovely target, a great big glider <laughs> flying along slowly. I mean, if, if you can't hit that, you shouldn't be in the shooting game. <laughs> oh, dear. And did the, you, uh, did you or any of your men manage to pick up any of those resupplies? Uh, I, I didn't personally, no. No, in fact, I, 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 I lost quite a bit of kit. I mean, I, I came out of that with my Bren gun uh, 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 and, and one magazine. That was all I'd got. Bren gun and the magazine, and that was all I came uh, away from that aircraft. Uh, and as I say, as for the, the gunners, I don't know what they did. I mean, whether they, whether the more they got mortared and and, and the. You know, sort of damaged or what? I don't know. I really don't know. I, it, I should have. I, no, I say I should. I I I, I know a, a, an armoured regiment spoke to me about this tank falling out of the the glider. But uh, as for the seventeen pounder guys, I don't know what happened to those gunners. I really don't know. Yeah. So did you only have? One clip of ammunition when you took yeah, that gun away. I just, I just had one one magazine in the in the Bren gun, and believe you me, if a rabbit had popped its head up near me, it, it would have got the lot. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. So did you use the ammunition at all, or did you not? Find I, I used some of it, not not all of it, because you 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 know tar targets don't stand still, sort of thing. You know. Uh, I mean, it's so easy. You you see some of these things on television these days where they're letting off their AK forty sevens and they seem to rattle it out and it you know, cost is no 
no, no consequence to them. They're not bothered. No, uh, there was no resupply as far as I was concerned at the time. I don't know. I mean, we went to clear a wood, and uh, as I say, it's uh, <laughs> no. So did you join up with a group of other soldiers and eventually meet up with other allies? Yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we, we met. Uh, now again, I don't know if they were fu Irish Fusiliers or whether they were Ox and Bucks. I, I know that um, we were uh, we were told or asked to go and clear a path to uh, a, a wood across these open fields and uh, all the way across uh, Bert Bowman and I uh, joined these guys and I, I think they must have been uh, Irish guys because all the way across these other guys were saying uh, you know uh, the effing oxen books we, 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 we've got two effing glider pilots here but none of the effing <laughs> oxen books want, want to come with us so to speak but we head across these fields and got to the, the wood and luckily there was no, nothing in the wood which was just as well but uh, all, I, 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 I just remember going across a barbed wire fence and dashing across this field in the open and I thought this is a bit dicey but, uh, you know, oh, yeah, uh, all part of life's gay pattern. Did you feel relieved, though, when you met up with the Allies who crossed the Rhine? Uh, must have done, must have done, yeah. The first troops I think I, I met that I can recall were a Canadian armoured regiment. And uh, they, they were quite happy. Um, and then we met some... Um, troops that had come over the Rhine and uh, they couldn't believe that we had left the UK only the day before and that, we, and that we'd be back in the UK within a week because they'd been there since D-Day. <laughs> I mean, they, some guys had a really rough war, they really did. Uh, I mean, oh gosh, just as well I didn't stay in an infantry regiment. Do you happen to uh, hit, be familiar with the name Koppenhoff Farm at all? No. Okay, uh, just asking because there was a soldier I interviewed ten years ago who had been in the Royal Ulster Rifles. He landed in the Rhine crossing in a place yeah. called Koppenhoff Farm, and because he, well, it, it must have been relatively close to Hamelkiln because he yeah. said his he said his commanding officer died when his glide when their glider crashed near there. But I just wondered if maybe you'd been in a similar area, mm. but. Well, I might have been. I mean, uh, <laughs> I know we crossed the railway line a couple of times to get where we wanted. Well, we got we we got back to Hamilton. That's where we I finished up in Hamilton. Yeah. But of course, on the railway station there, there was two direct gliders. They'd landed right on the blooming railway line, right on Hamilton itself. That yeah. was one of the uh, gliders, though, that this uh, man was talking about, because he said his commanding officer was a chap called Major Vickery, who was in uh, one of the gliders that crashed into the railway station. Ah, and he killed, well, there so. you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I remember seeing that glider. Yeah. Equally, I saw uh, a horse fly into a tree and just break up like a, a box of matches being thrown everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exciting times at the time. Yeah. And did you uh, happen to see any German civilians when you were there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, um, uh, actually, uh, uh, I met um, children rather than adults because one lad, um, he was... Uh, part of the Tot Labour organisation and uh, he said that the, the Germans had lined them all up and uh, more or less said, what are you? And if you said German Jew, they'd, they, they shot them. 
<laughs> terrible as it sounds, this is what he said to me. But I remember we, uh, I, I'd got some soap. Don't ask me where it came from. I really don't know. I must have looted it out of somebody else's stuff. Uh, and and, and I, I gave him this soap. Well, you'd think I'd given him a, a bar of gold. Here we go. He put it to his nose, and of course, the smell of Lux soap as it were. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I don't know what happened to that kid. He stayed with us for quite a few hours and then disappeared. Whether he was being streetwise or what, I don't know. No, I didn't. Uh, of course, there was a non fraternisation ban on, so you, you, you weren't supposed to talk to any German civilians. But um, where we were, there, there was only the odd farmhouse and stuff like that. You know, outside of Hammercombe itself, there was nothing. I mean, I, I went to Goch to look at Goch. By a jingo, that was that had been fought over a couple of times. That was a total wreck that town. But uh, no, no. So there we go. I'm sorry. That's 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 me. Poor, such as it is. Did you uh, get to talk with any other German prisoners? No, no. I I I got. I was sent to guard some prisoners. Uh, there must have been, I don't know, a couple of hundred of them. And uh, all I'd got at the time was a fighting knife. That's all I'd got, my fighting knife. And uh, they're all standing there and sitting there and one thing or another. And one of our officers came up, or an officer came up, I don't know if he was one of our officers, and, and, and spoke to one of the German officers. And this German officer spit at him. And I thought, he's going to kill him. I really did. But uh, believe you me, if, 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 uh, I, there I was with all these prisoners, so-called, uh, all very happy, I think, to be prisoners, but just as well, because if they'd have raised up and started to make any trouble, I'd have, I'd have been off like a, a rocket, I can tell you, on my own with all these guys. Yeah. No, uh, no, that's it. No, it's all, all little sort of vignettes of memory coming up here one way or another. And uh, what happened when you got back to uh, Britain? What were your responsibilities then? Well, uh, the first thing was when we got to Bryce Norton, the customs and excise people wanted to know what what we'd brought back with us and of course we'd got nothing basically <laughs> we were just us and then I went back to to Tarrant Rushton which was down, down near Bournemouth it was my, that's where my squadron was based so I went back there in the hut got in the hut and I think there were only two of us left out of the hut who came back so we lost out of the out of the hut. We must have lost I don't know ten guys, I suppose. Yeah, because we then sorted out all their kit. I remember sorting out their kit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had enough handkerchiefs to see me through the the rest of my service career. I think out of these guys' kits, <laughs> I wasn't. wasn't <laughs> Sending those home to their wives and daughters, handkerchiefs, <laughs> they were like gold. Yeah. And did your co-pilot come back with you? Yeah, oh yes, Bert and I, okay, yeah, yeah, oh yes, yeah, uh, 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 and also uh, Bert wasn't in my, uh, wasn't in my hut, funnily enough. Uh, who was with me? Was it Jeff Higgins? There was there were two of us in our hut. That was all, out of the ones that left only a week before, sort of thing. Yeah. 